Hi, everyone. I'm Pam Carlson. I'm one of the children's librarians here at the BJK Main Library. And I want to welcome you to Chapter Chat along with my friend Janine. Yes. Hi, I'm Janine Sakakura from the Mark Twain Library. And welcome to Chapter Chat, our monthly conversation highlighting new books from our elementary and middle school collections, airing the second Wednesday of every month. We will each talk about four new books that have arrived on our shelves within the last six months. So let's begin and we will start with you, Pam. Take it away. Okay, and I just wanted to mention our background here is a salute to February because it's Library Lovers Month. So this is my first book. This is Alice's Farm by Mary Rose Wood. And this is the story of Carl who lives in the city. He's very happy to be a city boy and so are his parents, but it's getting a little more crowded. And when his mother is out one day with his baby sister, a rat runs across in front of her stroller. And that's kind of the last straw that they decide that they're just gonna buy a farm and they're just gonna leave city life, even though they have no idea how they're gonna make a living, how to farm, what to do, but they pack up everything and they leave. And when they move into this really nice place, the first person who shows up just about is an evil land developer who knows that they're, they have no idea what they're doing and he wants to buy the land from them. But little by little, his parents figure it out and they have a huge garden area. So they decide that's where they really can make some money. But they don't know that there are a lot of others living on the land, rabbits and rabbits especially. And so the rabbits decide that they're going to help save this land because they know that if the land developer gets it, it'll be torn down, there'll be stores and, and all sorts of things built there and they won't have a home anymore. So they are led by a very clever rabbit named Alice and she makes alliances with the chipmunks to share their seeds with um, a fox to help carry them across to the garden every night even with Carl's dog and with his toddler sister who can actually understand what the animals are saying. And so they start this, this garden and everybody cannot figure out how this garden is just amazing. And the plants are growing, the veggies are growing, everything is doing great. And they all think that Carl's doing it, but Carl isn't. But he does realize finally that the rabbits are doing the work and somehow they figure out a way to communicate, especially since his dog is also involved. And they do end up making a success. It's just a really great story of um, learning to adapt to a whole new way of life. And if you like Charlotte's Web and if you like animal stories where the animals are the heroes, there's even a bald eagle um, who's, who's kind of, is really instrumental in helping save the farm too. So this is Alice's farm and it's a great read. Wow, it's pretty cool. It's kind of yeah. like, kind of like, has like a community vibe too. Like yes. nature has a, its own community. They adapt and all yeah. that. It's pretty cool. So cute. <laughs> When you mentioned the bald eagle, I'm like, oh my god, oh no, <laughs> they're yeah. all little, they're all little rodents, and you know, bald eagles love those. <laughs> and and somehow they just all all look out for each other. Oh, that's so cool. You know, how adorable. <laughs> yeah, it gives you a new respect for toddlers too. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> so cute. Alrighty, so my first book is this one letters from cuba mm. and this one you can find on our children's fiction shelves and it just arrived at our branch uh, this month so this is a historical fiction novel um, and it's based on also oh, it's letters from cuba by ruth behar i think is how you pronounce it behar and um, it's actually based on ruth's family history when her Jewish grandparents left Poland and Turkey to Cuba during World War II. 
in search for a better life. Um, this book is mostly about a Polish girl named Esther, whose father had fled during the years leading up to the Holocaust. Now, Esther's father has been able to raise enough money to only send one family member to Cuba. And of course, that family member is Esther. Uh, so not only is it hard to be separated from, from your family, it takes a lot of courage to go on this long journey alone by herself. Once arriving in Cuba, Esther is reunited with her father and becomes so well immersed in Cuban culture and enjoys the kindness of the Cuban people. She just loves everything about everything in the, um, in the, Cuba, in the country. Um, she, unfortunately though, Esther comes to the realization that Nazism kind of has found a foothold in the country and mm -hmm. somehow followed her there. Um, unfortunately, so, but from the start of her journey to Cuba, Esther promises her little sister that she would go ahead, her little sister, uh, Malka, that she would write about everything that happens every day. So as you go from chapter to chapter, every chapter starts with dear Malka or dear my, uh, my dearest sister Malka. And so it's kind of written in a, like a letter format, maybe almost like a diary type, type format as well. So it's, it's pretty interesting, it's really cool. So if you're really interested in historical fiction, Cuban culture, um, the Holocaust, obviously, like escaping the Holocaust. This is a really good read, and I highly recommend it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that in regular children's fiction or middle school? Yeah, or? yeah regular children's fiction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, because I think we need more historical fiction. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And that is my next book is historical oh. fiction. <laughs> um, we Dream of Space by Erin Entrada Kelly. And this story is set in 1986. It's a story of Bird and her two brothers, Cash and Fitch. And they're all in the seventh grade. Even though Cash is older, he um, was uh, left back. So they're all in the same grade. And they're all excited because it is space month leading up to the launch of the Challenger at the end of the month. And Bird is especially excited because she wants to be the first female space shuttle commander. So she is really into it. And her brother Cash is, um, he's afraid that he's gonna be held back again. And, and he really is worried because he doesn't have much motivation to keep his grades up. He feels like he's not good at anything. So why should he even try? And Fitch is um, the other brother he has a temper that he just can't, he has a hard time controlling it. And he lives for the time after school when he can go to the arcade and play his favorite game. Their parents, uh, their parents have no clue what's going on with their children. It's, they could barely be called a family because they end the day, they start the day with arguments. And then they basically ignore their kids. They don't even eat together. Everybody eats in their rooms or in the living room or they don't, they don't spend, they're just barely a family. But wow. the month passes and Bird is just getting more and more excited because the teacher has them divide into groups and they're studying different parts of the shuttle and, the, and uh, what's going to happen. And we all know that the day, the month does not end well, it's a tragedy. But what happens that's actually kind of good is that her brothers, they, they know how important this is to Bird. And so they decide that they, the three of them are going to learn to take care of each other. And so it's just a really good story of um, this girl that has a dream. She even has imaginary conversations with Judith Resnick and, um, and their emotions are just always out there, the three of them. And then they learn how to enter each other's orbit at the end. Oh. But there's a lot that goes on in this story. And, and if you want to know more, there's a little note at the end about the Challenger. And 
And it's just, um, it was actually a Newberry honor book. So uh, librarians thought it was really good enough to win an award. So that's very exciting. So this is We Dream of Space. Cool. Highly recommended. Yeah, it sounds like a really good story. It's a little long, mm -hmm. but um, it's a very fast read because it goes, it's almost, it, it switches between the three siblings chap chapters um, are each. Oh, uh, that's each good. That's yeah. Good. Because they all have such different personalities. It's nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing that this, how did this, how did these people even become a family? <laughs> you know, a lot of, there's a lot of dysfunctional families out there too. Yeah. So it's, it's inevitable. Sometimes you'll, you'll see it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very cool, very cool. That's a good historical one too, because it's a slightly more contemporary than the one that I mentioned. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. All righty, so my next one is Anna on the Edge Ooh. by AJ Sass. Yeah, so this is a pretty cool book. It's found on our children's fiction shelves and um, it just came in this month. And as you can see, it's got a little LGBTQ genre label on it too. So um, this book is about 12 year old Anna Marie Jin, a dedicated figure skater who had recently won the title of the US Juvenile Girls Championship in figure skating. You can kind of tell on the cover too. Mm -hmm. Now she's ready for the big leagues. Uh, well, more like bigger little leagues, I guess you could say, which means she's ready to start a new season and, com and uh, compete at a higher level. This also means she is going to start commuting most days from San Francisco to Oakland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, with uh, skating at a new rink and he's, she's going to be in the new league and have a new choreographer who strictly enforces all female skaters to wear skirts, even to practice. Anna starts to notice a lot of female gender specific things happening about around her, like being forced to wear sparkly sequence costumes and being called Miss Anna Marie. Are start, it's starting to make her feel a little uncomfortable. So these types of things never bothered her before. So why, why does it bother her now? Well, she starts to find answers to that question after meeting Hayden, a transgender figure skating student who mistakes her for a boy. The interesting thing is, is she doesn't correct Hayden. Anna begins to question her gender identity. And not only is Anna going through this, she's also constantly reminding herself not to burden her mother with this journey that she's embarking on because she knows her mother, who's a single parent, Jewish Chinese American is struggling to pay for Anna's figure skating fees and whatever else that she needs in order to go on to the next level in, in figure skating. Um, so this is a uh, while going through the struggle to find her identity on her own and testing the waters as a non binary individual. She, the reader is reminded that there is no one way to identify as non-binary. It's a little difficult once you, you know, try and make that decision and kind of identify yourself as non-binary. It's hard to explain to people what pronouns to use, how to address certain, like, you know, binary or non-binary individuals. But this book really helps readers understand what kids are going through when questions about gender identity arise. So I highly recommend this book, especially if you're interested in the figure skating world, what it takes to become a figure skater and, and also seeking self identity. So definitely one to pick up on our children's fiction shelves. <laughs> well, I decided I needed a fun book to read. So this is the infamous Ratso's Camp Out by Kara LaRue and it's illustrated by Matt Myers. It's in the beginning chapter book. So it's, it's a very fun, quick read. So this is the story of the big city scouts who are going on their very first camp out and they all are excited about earning badges. And their scout master is Grandpa Ratso and he reminds them of the scout oath. There's part of it that says, no matter the problem, we'll solve it ourselves. 
We know we can fix it without any help. So just like that, the older scouts decide they don't need any help from the younger scouts. They don't need to read the handbook. They don't need to work together. They can do it themselves. But it rains that night, dinner, they say, where's the food? Oh no, we'll, we'll get it ourselves. They get one tiny fish for all of them. And there's also a case of poison ivy. So they change their minds, but fortunately help is on the way. So this is a lot of fun. There are black and white illustrations throughout the book. Let's see if I can find one here. This is after the rainy night, their tents are flooded. Oh, it's no. just a miserable experience. So this might, if you're a camper, you're gonna love this book. You're gonna be reminded of some of your camping memories, good or bad. And um, this is also part of a series about the infamous Ratzos. So very fun. Very cool, very cool. That's kind I'm of not a camper, so I, yeah. I, I, but I enjoyed this book. Yeah. It's kind of like also like a survival story in a way. Yeah. <laughs> Funny survival story. How are we going to find food? Oh, we gave suffered one a flood. More, <laughs> yeah. One more reason to say, nope, not going camping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything that could go wrong. I did, I did have that happen where it rained oh, one of the no. few times I went camping and it was just like the most miserable. Oh my gosh. That's, <sighs> that's why we're not campers either. <laughs> yeah. It'll but the whole series is, is very... It's, it's, it's a great, it's a fun, fun series. Yeah, yeah I think I've seen Fun to read too. about rats when they're yeah. not mean rat rats. I know. <laughs> not the kind that you see scurrying about in the alleyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> All righty. So my next one is a middle school book. Mm. You can find it in our middle school section. It came in recently this month as well. And it is called Keep It Together, Keiko Carter by Debbie Michiko Florence. And so I chose this particular book probably because the main character is part Japanese um, and also because the author is third generation Japanese American born and raised in California, basically similar to me. <laughs> so in this book, uh, Keiko Carter is super excited about starting seventh grade with her two best friends, uh, Audrey and Jenna. As a group, they needed to make quick decisions on whether on where they're going to eat lunch, who they're going to include in their circle of friends, and who to bring to the fall ball. Because in middle school, these quick decisions will determine how your middle school years will be. So, you know, middle school, how it is. It's all about social circles. It's all about who you date, if uh, what your friends are doing, you know, what clubs to join, such things like that. But what if one of your friends likes the same boy as you? Uh oh, I don't know. And that's exactly what Jenna and Audrey are going through, her two friends. And of course, Keiko, she tries to be the middleman and or trying to be like in the middle ground, just trying to resolve all these issues. And she's caught between both of them. Um, she can't believe some of the things that her friends are also doing, like starting clubs without telling her and, you know, making decisions that she thought they would make decisions as a group. So it's a little difficult, obviously, like, you know, when you have a social circle where <laughs> I guess you don't realize, but your friends have minds of their own, <laughs> but <laughs> it happens, you know, and as she's going through all this, she's like also trying to figure out, you know, herself and what kind of a person she is and how she can try and stand up to her friends while also supporting both of them. It's just a bunch, it's like, it, it's just like drama after drama, like things just keep happening and it's getting pretty difficult for her to balance not only school, but also boys and finding a date for the fall ball. It's, it seems like a lot of pressure, social pressure. And I believe it because it's middle school. So anyways, will she be able to stand up for herself and stand up to her friends and tell them like, hey, you know, you can't be doing this 
doing this to me and I'd, I'd like us to stop. <laughs> Can't we just be friends again? So there's a lot of feuds, but you got to pick up the book and read it to find out. I like that cover too. I know. It's really very cute. middle school. I know, right? And I'm just like, wow, I feel like I might have looked like that when I was younger. <laughs> Do you have the hair? <laughs> no, the hair like that. I don't know about the, the buns, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be trendy as much as possible. That's right. <laughs> That's right. My last book was written by, this is Tay Keller, and she is the author of When You Trap a Tiger. This is this year's Newbery winner, and Newbery Award is given each year by a committee of librarians with the Li American Library Association. They choose what they believe is the most distinguished work of literature for children each year. And it can be um, middle school, elementary. There have been a couple of picture books even that have won. And so this is this year's winner. And this is the story of middle schooler Lily. Lily is having a great time. She lives in California. She's happy. Um, life is fine. But then one day her mom says, oh, we're going up the coast. We're leaving the state. We've got to go take care of Hamani, which is their grandmother, because she's ill. And they don't know quite what's wrong with her, but mom is pretty urgent if she's going to just uproot um, Lily and her older sister, Sam. So they get there and um, Helmani is kind of a little surprised to see them there, but happy to have them. And, but just before they get to her house, it's a driving rainstorm and Lily sees a tiger in the middle of the road. And so she calls to her mom to stop, but of course no one sees the tiger except for Lily. And Tigers are very important because her Helmani has been telling them stories all the time uh, when they were growing up, um, stories from Korea about, and tigers were a big part of the stories. So she tells Helmani about it, about the tiger, and Helmani believes her immediately because she says, I stole something from the tigers and now this tiger wants it back. So Lily thinks if she gives the tiger what Helmani stole that Helmani will be healed and everything will be fine again. So she makes a deal with the tiger. She finds out what was stolen and she figures out how to give it back. But in the meantime, she meets um, a boy because the library is right across this, the street from them. So she goes there to research tigers and she meets this boy named Ricky, who's kind of an eccentric guy. He, wears hats all the time and he's a little bit different, but he has his own issues. So she tells him about the tiger and he doesn't even question it, but he helps her make a tiger trap. And so she's all excited because she's gonna heal Helmani and she will no longer be a QAG, which is a quiet Asian girl. She'll be a hero. She'll be the superhero of the family. So does it work? Does her deal result in Hamani being healed? Does the tiger trap work? Um, this is just a really good story of family traditions, traditional stories, a belief in spirits. Um, at every meal they make uh, what they call a kosa, which is a little meal for the spirits to eat before they do. And Tay Keller, um, as I said, won that award. And she said this was a book that she knew she had to write um, it helped her reconnect to the stories that her own grandmother told Taya and her sister when they were growing up. So this is When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller. Very cool. Very cool. Did you like it? I liked it. I, yeah. For some reason, I it sounded so strange that I originally thought, oh, I'll just pass on this one. But I like to read, read the award winners. And when I read it, I thought, oh, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> cool. It, it was a very good story. It's a good story for, um, to instill pride in your culture mm. yeah. and your family. You know, your family um, 
Helmani often did strange things and it was kind of an embarrassment to the girls, but they realized that being in a small town, everybody knew her because she'd helped, she used herbs to heal people and they didn't know if she was magic or what. But uh, it, it, it helped her, it helped us, the family get a lot, lot closer. Cool. So be proud of those stories that you know have been passed down from generation to generation and yeah and take Seriously. pride in your your own uh, cultural traditions yeah. is it take place in korea or here in america or it seemed like it was either in oregon or washington mm. because they they said they went up the coast from california but out of state mm. oh, oh i see so i'm thinking oregon cool. the coast of oregon mm -hmm. okay very cool very yeah cool. Yeah, yeah, and it's a, it's a modern it's a today. So. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay, very cool. I might need to pick that up. Yeah. yeah. And it has the best, you know, it has the best cover. Yeah. Those are what's so in great. the jar is what was stolen, and you won't know until mm. you read the book. Interesting. Very cool, very cool. Okay. So my last book is Before the Ever After. Uh, by Jacqueline, Jacqueline Woodson. Uh, this book is in our middle school section and very recently hit our shelves, I believe uh, last month. And I think this particular book is super important to highlight having it be the day before Super Bowl Sunday and also highlighting the fact that this book won the Coretta Scott Award. So somewhat fitting for Black History Month also, if you um, consider the author. She's a very notable African-American author. So the story is about 12-year-old ZJ, Zachariah Johnson Jr. So his father's name is also Zachariah, whose father is one of the most famous Titans in the NFL. He's so famous that he holds the record of most concussions in the F NFL. Wow. Not really a title that you want to have, but unfortunately, that's what CJ's father has. Regardless, ZJ loves having his father back at home and has gotten used to the whole t entire town idolizing his father. But what the rest of the town doesn't understand is the real struggle that ZJ and his mother has to go through with what's going on with Zachariah and his injuries. He would have crazy mood swings and severe memory loss that at one point he stared at ZJ and asked him what his name was. That's pretty devastating to hear your father say that and ask you what yeah. your name is. Like, how do you forget me? That's, this is horrible. We have to hope that ZJ's friends, family, and his creative songwriting can give him the support, love, and relief that he needs to get through this very hard time in his life. The story is set in the early 1990s when a lot of football players were experiencing serious symptoms related to injuries seen in boxers. So mood swings, headaches, aggression, lots of memory loss, severe memory loss. Well, during this time, doctors and scientists did not see that correlation. And so you can imagine the incredible struggle that ZJ and his mother endure throughout the book. Many people seek help and answers from doctors, thinking that there's a cure, but unfortunately there isn't. At this time, there wasn't even anything close to an answer or reason. This book is also in verse, so it's perfect for those that uh, are reluctant readers out there. Um, I listened to the audiobook for this, and I cannot tell you how many emotions I had during <laughs> listening mm. to this book the entire time. It was just up and down, up and down. And I'm just like, wow, I can't imagine what ZJ is going through or any, any of the kids that have football, have NFL football um, fathers, you know, playing in the NFL and having a lot of concussions or concussion protocols. It's, it's pretty scary. Um, what was hard for me with this book was that I am a pretty big NFL fan. <laughs> I love football. I love watching it. And knowing that this happens to players portrayed in this book, it's, it's definitely even more scary. So 
every time there's a tackle on the field now, I'm going to be like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Oh no. And then they, and then they show those hits over and over yeah. and over. Yeah, I know, in every angle, like a yeah. 360, and you're like, oh gosh, that looks worse than the last time he replayed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's horrible. It's, it's it really is. difficult. It is, but they, they come, they come a long way in that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, they, they go through the percussion protocols now. They're a little bit more delicate about each tackle or each possible concussion. So at least, mm -hmm. at least that, you know, they finally, I think in the back of the book, the author mentioned that it wasn't until recently, sometime within the last 10 years, maybe 15 years, when the um, NFL actually finally said, okay, there's a correlation and they've accepted that. So we have to go through procedures now, like protocol. Yeah. And you got to protect these guys. Yeah. Because they're often so young when they retire mm -hmm. and their whole life could be lost because exactly. of that. Yeah. And, it's, and that's what it seemed like with the father in this book, Zachariah, it seemed it was, he had hit after hit after hit to the point where the NFL actually said, you know what, maybe we should have you retire early or yeah. take it easy, but it's unlikely that you're going to come back, you know, that yeah. type of thing. And that's devastating to him as a oh, player. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. You just want to play as long as you can. Mm -hmm. He loved the sport so much and mm -hmm. so he, he wanted to do it, but now it's very unfortunate. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. those are, those are our books for this month. Yeah. And we hope that you've found a few that you want to read. And if you want to um, find them in the library, you can go to our um, chapter chat 0221 and you'll find those books there. You can get them, um, request them and then pick them up at the libraries that have the, um, the grab and go. And we hope that we'll see you in person very soon but uh, we're going to continue our chapter chats. Um, we, we enjoy doing them and mm -hmm. uh, we hope you enjoy them too and that you enjoy the books. So I, I guess that's so long for now. Yeah. All righty. Thank you, everybody. Thank you Thanks, for Pam. watching, everyone. Enjoy the books. Bye, Janine. Bye, Pam. <laughs>